What's up everyone, George from Brooks Digi here coming to you from our office in Los Angeles. I am super excited about this video today. Not only is this our first YouTube video finally after all these years, but my friends over at Area 51 Tether Co. sent me their next generation cables to test out. I did not pay for these cables, these were sent to me for free. Uh, however, this review is going to be entirely my own opinion. Let's check this out. So we have a USB 3.0 micro B cable. This looks like another one of their 31 footers. The same thing, another 31 foot cable. This time it's gonna be in a USB C right angle. A third thing we have here looks like this is another uh, 31 foot USB C. Got that nice smaller connector there for the USB C female. Nice thing about this next generation is that you can combine these two cables, the 31 foot extension and the 31 foot tether cable and get a 62 foot USB-C tether cable that doesn't require any external power. Ideally you want to eliminate the need for that second connection in the middle which is why it's so great that Area 51 came out with these 31 foot cables. The one thing I notice about these right off the bat is that the booster chips here, you know in the previous generation they had this little micro USB power inlet that you would use when you needed to add power to your connection for whatever reason. These newer cables do not have that power connection. These cables feel really high quality. The insulation feels like a big improvement. Um, they're a little bit thinner than the previous generation and they also feel a little bit stronger. All of the connectors and the booster chips are now metal. In the previous generation, these uh, were plastic. This connection here at the camera side would tend to get loose. You can kind of see that one's got some play in it. Uh, sometimes if you're really rough on your cables, these could even kind of rip out a little bit. And that was the biggest problem I probably had with the previous generation of cables here. These new ones, as you can tell, are a upgraded metal connector. There's gonna be a lot less play in that connection. And I'm also told that these booster chips are crush proof up to 300 pounds. For one, old cable. 10 pound pumpkin weight, about five feet off the ground. Let's see. <laughs> it obliterated. Test number two, let's see how the all metal housing on the new cable holds up. Well, it definitely uh, crushed it a little bit. Check this out, it left a dent in the pavement and it didn't even break it, that's amazing. Look at that, it still connects even though that housing is totally crushed. That's amazing. I can't believe it, I'm shocked. So if these are you know, on the floor of your set and people are walking all over them, you don't have to worry about somebody stepping on this plastic booster chip from the old generation and cracking it in half. So that's a huge upgrade. If you can see here, this is a new style of USB-C connector here. It's a lot shorter um, and a lot slimmer. So I think that's gonna be really nice for a mirrorless camera setup or a DSLR setup where the tether port's on the side like that. My concern though is that this older style being a bit longer is compatible with the phase one IP4 camera which has a really deep set tether port. I don't think that these new generation are going to be uh, compatible with phase one, at least not the right angle model. We'll see if they do a uh, non right angle model of this as well, I haven't been told. The camera I'm really excited to test these out with is this Fuji GFX100 right here. This thing has been uh, notoriously difficult to tether. Uh, I've had to label a lot of my cables in my kit, especially extenders, no GFX. Um, so I know that this cable has been developed with the GFX100 specifically in mind, and hopefully this will solve a lot of those tethering problems. I'm really excited to check that out. Let's get into some tests here. I have my laptop here, we got Capture One. Uh, we're gonna do some tethered tests. We're gonna do some tests, uh, testing speed by other means. One other thing I'm told about these new cables is that they're actually uh, built to USB 3.2 standards. So hopefully we'll actually see some uh, increased transfer speed out of this compared to the previous generation. So to begin with, let's test out the raw transfer speed of this cable. And the way that I like to do that is by using a fast SSD drive. We'll do a test with this 31 foot cable to see what, if any, speed loss we have over the length of the cable. 
And then I wanna compare this to the previous generation Area 51 tether cable, as well as a couple other manufacturers tether cables uh, to see if there's any improvement there. And we'll go ahead and start the test. So it looks like we're getting expected read and write speeds here. Now let's test this out with our older uh, Tether Tools USB A to C cable. Doesn't want to connect? No? <laughs> this table? There we go. Okay. <laughs> Nobody touch it. Let's give this one a shot. <laughs> Error writing the test file. Oh boy, we lost the drive again. <laughs> okay. I'm a little bit surprised that we're having this much trouble connecting this drive. Let's switch now to the first generation uh, Area 51 tether cable. So the verdict there with that test, transfer speeds are a little bit slower than what we were getting out of that short OEM cable. Still pretty impressive for a 31 foot cable with no external power. Next, let's try out the next generation. Instantaneous connection. And let's see what kind of speeds we get out of it. 370 right, read speed still around 276. Okay, so about the same as the previous generation, uh, but I will note that the drive was much faster to connect on the computer. So before we get into some camera tests, there's one other thing that I wanna try. You can use this 31 foot extension to get a 62 foot tether cable. My current setup's maxing out at 45 feet. Let's do that st same stress test with the hard drive and see if there's any loss of read and write speed over that increased distance. So unlike our setup without the extension, it did take a couple seconds there for a Blackmagic disk speed test to kind of recognize the drive. It was reading zero for the first round, uh, but then as soon as it started to do the second round of read-write testing, now we're seeing speeds approaching what we were getting without the extension. That is so impressive. Now let's do some more real-world tests. Let's connect a camera into Capture One. So I'm gonna be doing these camera tests with the Fujifilm GFX 100. Anytime I get a new tether cable, I always tether it with this camera because I know if it works with the GFX 100, I know it's gonna work with everything else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up iStat menus and you can see right here, it's gonna show us our current write speed. And let's just fire off a few frames. Fire a few more here, 205, 163. To see a write speed over 200 megabytes a second coming into Capture One, is that's pretty awesome. So now that we have those numbers established, well, I wanna go back to the first generation cable and see if there's any difference there. Here we go, 105, 153, 156, let's see if we can get it over 200 like last time, 150, no, 165. Nope. So for my next test here, I wanna connect this 31 foot cable into the 31 foot repeater for a 62 foot tether cable. Let's just pause and think about that for a second. A 62 foot tether cable. Let's see how our speed is. Once again in iStat, starting off at 106, 147, 173, 198. Oh my god, you guys, you know, there might be like the slightest speed reduction here versus the unextended 31 foot cable, but we're, we're, our speeds are pretty similar here. Like this is, um, wow. Wow, I gotta take a second. I'm like, that is, wow. <laughs> I am so impressed. So now we have, this is a brand new, unused Tether Tools USB-C to A cable, the classic orange. No connection. Well, there you have it, folks. If you needed any more proof that these Tether Tools cables ought to be avoided, there's your proof. Can't connect to the hard drive, can't connect to the camera this is just useless. So unfortunately, we won't be able to compare speed to this, but you know what? Who cares? Because if we can't use it, we don't care how fast it is. So some final thoughts here. Overall, you know, I really like this cable. I think it's uh, it's got some nice improvements over the first generation Area 51 cables. That said, I think the differences are definitely a little bit subtle. The main advantages of this new generation are definitely gonna be the durability. And let's be real, these are not cheap tether cables. 
This current generation runs $99 for the 31 foot cable. Uh, I don't have pricing information yet for this new generation, but it's going to be at least that much, if not a bit more. And when you're spending $100 on a tether cable, you want it to work reliably for a long time. So I think that about wraps it up for my review of this second generation Area 51 tether cable. Thank you again so much to Area 51 for sending these over for me to test out. It's been a blast. And uh, again, I'm new to YouTube here, so if you like this video, if you want to see more videos like this, please do me a huge solid. Go down and like and subscribe right there, and we'll see you in the next one.